Hey, this is Chris. How are you doing? Lacris Mobility video. After our very busy night <laughs> that I've outlined in previous videos regarding the birth of our newest granddaughter, um, went home about, got home about 8.30 in the morning, went to sleep, had a, had a meeting with a client at 1 o'clock, and I very nearly overslept the whole thing. But, uh... This is just a bumpy little road. Sorry about the, sorry about shaky cam or wiggly cam or whatever. But anyway, <coughs> he called me a, few, a couple days ago. He said he was having these uh, black squares in, in Chrome while he was trying to browse the web and uh, you couldn't see anything through them. So I thought that's kind of weird. Maybe you know, I told him to try to reset it and I told him to try to use another browser, but he really likes Chrome. I really told him to try another browser kind of as a test, you know, to see if it was a Chrome problem or if it was a computer problem. But, um, so anyway, uh, that was a couple weeks ago, and uh, he called me back a couple days ago and said, look, you know, can you come look? And he clamped my wife's computer while he's here. And so I uh, drove out here, and sure enough, uh, as, I, as I was scrolling through any kind of page in Chrome, there was this big black square showing up randomly. Something I'd never seen before, so I did a reset, it didn't work. Well, it seemed to work for like a couple minutes, but then it came back. And so, uh, you know, it did the clean the, the clean up part where it does the book, I mean, not the bookmarks, but the history and the cache files and the images, and that didn't help. And so finally, I, did, I tried deleting just the profile, uh, which is something you can do if you know where the profile is. Uh, but you have to enable the viewing of hidden files in your uh, folders first. So if you're not sure how to do that, then you won't be able to see the folders that you want to delete because it's a hidden folder. So I did that, and that didn't work. And so finally, I thought, well, the only thing left to do is completely obliterate Chrome from the laptop. So I made sure that I had exported his bookmarks to a file to be re-imported later, and then I also logged into Google to see if his uh, logins had been saved, and for some reason only about a third of them had been saved. <clears throat> I'm not really quite sure why that was the case, except his internet is not the best in the world, and so maybe it just never had time to sync, or it wasn't fast enough, or whatever. <clears throat> It doesn't really matter the reason, the reason the, but the fact of the matter is that it wasn't synced uh, on uh, account. Well, it's uh, passwords.google.com, I think is what it is. So I uh, opened up this password, the password uh, page inside Chrome and took three screenshots of, and, and, you know, revealed all the passwords, took three screenshots and left them on the desktop. So if he ever runs into a password a login combination he can't remember that's not already been synced back into Google from online, then he'll be able to recover that and not have to go through that, you know, resetting the password thing on any of those sites. So did that and then uh, uninstalled Chrome and then went into the app data folder, which is that hidden folder. And anything that said Google and anything that said Chrome, I just deleted the whole thing. I then uh, reinstalled, I have a standalone installer on my flash drive, and so I don't have to download it from the internet, because his internet is really problematic. So I've got a, I've got the, I've got a standalone installer for Chrome 64-bit and a 32-bit version, so I installed Chrome, logged into his account, his bookmarks synced right back up, I mean a password login, password combinations uh, synced right back up, so we had those. Uh, imported his bookmarks, everything was back to normal, and uh, started browsing, and uh, the problem was gone. And so, you know, I don't really know. I mean, it's one of those things. I, I did a video on this a long time ago. It's like, what was wrong with my computer? I don't know what, what was wrong. And I know it seems to be, you know, it's kind of a ham-fisted way to go about things when you really think about it. But, you know, I could... I could spend several hours trying to figure out exactly what went wrong, or I could just uninstall it and wipe it and reinstall it, and if it works, then it works. 
and you know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's just a matter of expediency. And so I did that, and the thing works, and so that's good. And so I'm gonna. By the way, his wife's computer was not bad at all. <laughs> so that just that was just a normal run some C cleaner, run some malware bytes, run my defrag, done. Yeah, that was easy one. It doesn't often happen that way though. But anyway, his computer's running good. He needs some more memory. You know, when I sold this computer, to, I've sold both those computers to them. Uh, the wife's computer, I think, was like a couple years ago. The IBM, the ThinkPads R500, was four or five years ago. I mean, it's it's been a while. And so, you know, that that machine's provided good service. Uh, but I, when I sold it to him, I had Windows 7 on it. And... Um, you know, it only had two gigabytes of memory on it, but it ran acceptably well, and so it wasn't a big deal. Now that it has 10 on it, with all the extra things that Windows 10 likes to do in the background all the time, two gigabytes is just not enough. And you can really feel it when you run the machine because everything's lagging. Click on something, it takes, you know, 10 or 15 seconds for something to happen. I mean, that's how bad it is. And so. So I'm going to get him another two gigabytes of memory and stick it in there for him, and that will really speed up that machine. Um, you know, it'll, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to set the world on fire, but it'll be responsive and it'll be useful. And it'll probably use it another couple of years. So, and which is why, you know, I pretty much just sell Lenovo's because I don't, you know, once I sell them, I don't have to worry about it. Now, as an added bonus, uh, he does work. He buys old golf carts and fixes them up and sells them. He doesn't work on them, which I thought was kind of odd. Well, I mean, maybe not, because he said, you know, if you look at a mechanic's house, what do you see? You see a bunch of old cars sitting all over the place that he's trying to get rid of, right? And so that's what he wants to avoid. So it's, it, at first it struck me as odd, but when he gave me the explanation, it made sense. And so what he does is he goes around whenever, wherever he can find an old golf cart that he thinks that he can fix, that he'll buy it, and then he'll restore it. Not necessarily to like what it was like when it was new, uh, but restore it to a very good, I mean, it's in good condition. But he's not hes not really looking to absolute fidelity to the original because it's really not important. It's a, it's a functional issue. But man, he does really nice work. I mean, he's got a really nice shop. And um, he's got a lift in his shop that can lift the carts up. He's got a winch on the ceiling that can lift the front of the cart up so he can work on it. I mean, he's, he's in his 70s and he's still doing his work. So, you know, he needs a little, he needs some things to uh, make sure he doesn't have to lie on the ground, do work and stuff like that and bend over a lot. So, but yeah, really nice shop. He's got a welder, you know, air compressor, all, you know, all the things he needs to and he really does not, and he does all the work himself. So he'll, you know, he'll take the thing completely apart. He'll buy replacement parts, or he'll fabricate replacement parts. Like today, he's got one on his uh, lift where just about the entire floor was rusted out. And it's like, no problem. I'll go buy a piece of sheet steel from the local steel supplier, and I'll take the old floor and I'll clamp it down to it so all the holes. I can re-drill all the holes that need to go through it, and then I'll weld the thing, weld the new pan, the new piece of steel onto, onto the frame. It's like, it's it's amazing. It's really, really nice work. I'm impressed. Uh, if you need a golf cart, let me know. I will hook you up. I don't want to just broadcast his name, you know, all over the internet. Because I don't think he's really looking for that. But, you know, if you if you need a good used golf cart, I think most of the ones he sells are like the, like the three to $4,000 range, worth every penny. Because they, they are fully, when he gets done, they're fully functional. So, uh, anyway, that was very interesting. You know, I got, I got the, I got the 50 cent tour. Very interesting. So, uh, I've known him for a long time. I know he, I know he did golf carts. It's the first time he's, he showed me the, you know, the, the inner sanctum. All righty. Got questions or comments? I enjoy, you know. You know, it's a, I'm going to go home. I'm going to relax the rest of the day. It was nice just to take a break and go see somebody and just, you know, have a good time while I was getting paid. I mean, that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's all right. But anyway, 
Got questions or comments? Leave them in the section below. Like and subscribe. We appreciate when you do. We only have, we only need 573 more subscribers until we can get remonetized. Am I holding my breath? Nah. That's okay. We'll keep doing videos anyway. Doesn't matter. We'll see you on the next one.